political affiliation or party of that person. It doesn't matter the ethnic uh, affiliation of that particular person. Kenya is bigger than all of us, and there is no one above the law. And I must say that I congratulate the police for their swift action. Mm. Uh, those people who have uh, been detained for incitement, uh, for head speech uh, mongery, uh, must be uh, taken to court. Uh, the law must take it to scores, and they must be punished for the consequences if found guilty. And that's why this would be a test case yeah. for our institutions yeah. and our judiciary to make sure that, in fact, we do not tolerate. We have a zero tolerance for anyone from whatever political party. And I also expect the political leadership of our various parties to come out and condemn this action. We should not be entertaining this thing because it's going to push us uh, to the edge. Absolutely. And that is not where we want to go as Kenya. No, it's not. Moshimua, you said you've been to Rwanda. And you know, the, the genocide did not begin overnight. It was systematic. It was over a period of months when they kept spreading the hate. Yes. That's what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing the okay. level of hate, whether it's out there in the streets or on social media, they're escalating. They're escalating each time because they can get away with it. They can get away with it. And it's going to reach a point where it's, going to, it's a tipping point. How do we stop it? Can we stop this madness? We have no choice because there's only one Kenya. And I think one dangerous thing in Kenya is also the way the ICC cases unfolded. There's a sense of impunity mm. amongst a few in mm. our classes that we must watch out for, that people think I can do anything and I get away with it and I would be held accountable. Yeah. Number two is when you think about Rwanda, I was a boy in high school in Form 3 when it happened. There was no social media, there was no, no Facebook, Correct. there was no instant messenger, SMSs were not there. They just had ethnic radios that were being used and yeah. code words yeah. that were being used. Mm -hmm. Today we have social media and my goodness what is being written there. We defend people's freedom of speech, but it's too much. And it's again to the young generation, I appeal to them. Yeah. Be very careful what you're writing on social media. You have seen these politicians who have been taken and uh, they are being, uh, spending the next four nights. They have lawyers, batteries of lawyers, fighting for them to be bailed, which is a constitutional right. Yeah. And that's a different legal argument, I personally think. While they must be held accountable and their cases are judged fairly, these are bailable offenses in a sense. However, if you're a young person in Kibra, in Korogosho, in Kiandutu, you go to jail and see where your family is going to get for you 10 expensive lawyers to get you out. You'll rot in jail. Correct. So young people to Chanuke, you've given us the, the, hashtag. Is, the hashtag. It is what? Chorea Ukabila. Correct. There's another simple one I always use, Ukabila ni Ujinga. Ukabila ni Ujinga. Someone wrote it up. I didn't bring it up. Yes. I just follow it because I like it. Ukabila ni Ujinga, Chorea Ukabila. That is very important. And let me give you a practical example. There was a case in Nakuru where allegedly the MP for Nakuru said some people of one ethnic group should be sent out. Mm -hmm. Jeff Koinange today, if you're a young person or any Kenyan aspiring to make something out of yourself, you go buy one acre of land in Nakuru. It's a lot of money. Yeah. You go to the bank and get a mortgage and build a five-story building. Mm -hmm six apartments on every floor mm -hmm. that's 30 apartments yep. you need to repay for the land you need to repay for the mortgage you need that investment to work for your family and your children yep. in nakuru you need renters whether they are turkana they are kalenjin luo kisi so kabila ni ujinga mm. when you start telling supposedly owners of nakuru whether they are kikuyu or whether they are uh, whether they are, they are kalenjin as you think they are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm to start saying, send these people away. Home, yeah. Who will rent your apartments? How will you get your, will how you pay your mortgage? Let us bring it back to Kibra. When you say, let us chase away the few people who live in Kibra, the Kikuyus. That Mama Mboga, who sells you Mboga and runs a little cash shop, tomorrow where will you buy food from when she has been scared and run away? So I think Ukabila and Ujinga, Vijana, Tuchore Ukabila, let us put it aside. There is politicians in this country who want to rule. Let us use one standard of holding up them up to account. How well will you implement the Constitution? And not just the theoretical things in the Constitution, but the rights that are very basic in Article 43. Right to quality housing, 50 years after independence, no Kenyan should be living in a shack 
in a slum, in Kibra, in Mathare, in Dagoreti, in Obunga, you name it. There are slums in every part of this country. No Kenyan child should be having jiggers so they can't wear shoes and can't go to school because the right of the education is in the constitution. These are the policy issues where we should be distinguishing the politicians. And then you might be surprised that the most committed and most helpful politician on their policies and implementation might not be your tribesmen because the president is a president from one ethnic community. But it doesn't mean automatically every person in that community benefits. If my member of parliament, former member of parliament who voted for me, Raila Odinga, becomes president today, it doesn't mean every Luo person in this country will, will automatically know and benefit that the Ugali on their plate will increase. Absolutely. Instead, we will still have to hold him to deliver policies, fight corruption, fight insecurity, build more education opportunity, be fair, be mm. inclusive. Yeah then we will know he's a good president. Not just because he's Luo, Absolutely. and Uhuru Kenyatta will not go down in history that he's a good president to some people because he's a Kikuyu. Exactly. Because Kikuyu suffer when the economy suffers. There you Everybody. go, Mwishmua. I guess the obvious question is, when did the rain start beating us? That's what we want to know, because we thought we were on an upward trajectory. But clearly we're not. Clearly we, we hate too much. We don't want to see this country progress. Well, I, I think we are doing well at a certain level. If you look, in 2010, we had a new constitution with an excellent Bill of Rights. Uh, we have um, uh, decentralized. We have now a devolved system where governance and, um, and uh, resources are at directly at the people's level. Uh, we have built institutions, uh, the judiciary, for example, and let me pay tribute to the uh, Chief Justice, mm. uh, Willie Mutunga, mm. uh, for transforming uh, our judicial system. Uh, he's living a proud man. Uh, we have built institutions like the IEBC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, the National uh, Reconciliation Commission, and many others. Uh, they're not perfect, uh, but it is a good start for us. But the most important thing is to strengthen those institutions. For example, uh, the National Reconciliation and uh, 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 Institution. It uh, doesn't have enough resources. It doesn't have enough uh, teeth to be able to do its job. In fact, what we should be doing is reinforce our constitution and our ability to be able to do things constitutionally. Mm. And that's what many people are uh, running away from. They want to weaken our constitution. They want to weaken our, our institutions so that we are left at the mercy of, of politicians. And that is something we, sh we should never accept. And that's why I think... Uh, we must uh, take the signs that are building up now very uh, clearly and take action against those people who want to push us to the edge. We must say enough is enough. We cannot go on with that. And we should not appease uh, hate mongers. We should not appease those who promote uh, negative ethnicity, uh, who say that one ethnic group is better than the other. Mm. We don't get anything by demonizing, demeaning, and uh, degrading our national leaders uh, and, and uh, particular uh, people because of their ethnicity, because of their political affiliation or religion. We can't do that. Every Kenyan matters. Every one of us, every member of the 42nd, 42 communities uh, is special and unique. They matter. And that's what Kenya needs uh, to build. Uh, to grow mm. and to become a great nation. Uh, we cannot uh, just decide that one particular community doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Or one particular leader doesn't matter anymore. And we have to respect our constitution and institutions. Okay, let me ask you a quick question. And it's a controversial question, which we're real, you, you first and then you. Uh, because there's been three out of four Kikuyu presidents since independence, if we had a Somali president, say, if we had a Somali president, would it be different? Would we hate as much? You think? <laughs> Quick answer. <laughs> first of all, that's a very nice question. Yeah. Let me first say something just uh, uh, my good friend, Honorable Asana, said. Yes. Uh, there's 42 ethnic groups in Kenya. There's 43. The Nubi of Kibra are officially recognized, mm. and for the longest time, they were marginalized and not even recognized. Mm. Now they're there. I must speak for them. Good. Everyone. Because they are my good. So they, these 43, and they all matter. Excellent. That's number one. Number two, he mentioned institutions, and very important. 
I think one institution that we must reform is IBC. Okay. And I think the IBC must do I, I the dignified. I will tell you about. Thought, and I'll I tell want, you about the Somali. Okay, that's right. Yes. I want to come back to IBC right after the break. Okay. We cannot. We cannot reform it by going into the streets. Well, uh, and hold on, hold on. <laughs> Somali president. Yes. Somali president. I will tell you first of all. I think we are likely to have a Muslim president. If I look in my looking glass, it's going to be somebody called Governor Ali Hassan Joho. That's the most potential oh first Muslim president of Kenya. Are you serious? Yes. Somali president or oh, Muslim president? Well, uh, I think uh, uh, Real quick, 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 uh, ethnicity or religion does not matter. If we do not respect our constitution, if we do not build strong institutions that defend and uphold our constitution, if we don't grow our economy, if we do not unite and come together as a nation, <laughs> It doesn't matter whether you have a Chinese or an Indian president. It will exactly be the same. Mm. Ali Hassan Joho? Mm. Ali Hassan Joho has a great Are potential. Are you kidding me? You say I'm kidding you, but he is Governor 001 running the county of Mombasa and delivering results. Then why, we, can, we can come to another okay. session of analyzing why, why would performance he give me an of interview? Government. Ali Hassan Joho, I have his number. I'll tell him. Dude. <laughs> You're going to be president of Kenya. You, you better to talk, talk to Jeff. You know what I'm saying? I'll talk to him. You know what I'm saying? Th that's a separate... Is he watching? He's my deputy party leader. I'll talk to him. He can come <laughs> okay. to the show. And he's not a bad person. Yeah. But I can tell you what he has said yes. is important. Okay. For it's a long time, Muslims in this country... Mm. And I sort of evaded mm. the Somali question. Yes. Because the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Report is in Parliament. Yes. And that report cannot be debated despite numerous petitions. Yet all the injustices against Somalis... Wagala massacre and everything. That's the president right. was there That's in the right. northeastern. He, those two words did not pass his mouth. Wagala massacre. So I doubt it will be a Somali. Good point. Good point, gentlemen. Let's take a break. Come back. Let's talk about IBC. You talk about IBC. Let's talk yes. about IBC. The way forward. Does Itzhak Hassan has to have to go? Does he have to go? Let's talk about it. We need have to re reform IBC. Okay. Keep tweeting at Okoth Kenneth. At MP Yusuf Hassan at Kunengajev. The hashtag is Chorea Ukabila. Yes? Yes, yes. Chorea Ukabila. Jeff Kunenge live at the Villa Rosa Kempinski on this Wednesday is talking the talk. Let's see if you can all walk the walk. We'll be back in a moment.